Welcome to the exciting world of Pappy's Art Adventures. The window to your imagination. Hi everybody, welcome to Pappy's Art Adventures. The window to your imagination. On today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to paint this watercolor painting. You'll be amazed how simple it is to do. But first, let's learn more about watercolors. First, let's talk about watercolor paper. You can buy it in pad form or purchase single sheets with a fine or rough grain. Some of the popular brush sizes are the number one fine brush, the number six sable round brush, a larger wash brush, a synthetic angle brush, and a regular paint brush. A fine brush creates a fine line. Good for detail work. A round number six sable brush can create a medium stroke, a fine stroke, or even a broader stroke by manipulating the brush. The synthetic angle brush is great for crisp edges and very broad strokes. You can purchase various size mixing trays or palettes to mix your watercolor paint. You can also utilize the lid from your plastic watercolor case. Let's talk watercolor paint. Watercolor comes in tubes. Because tube paints are already soft, they're very easy to work with. The hard pan paint must be mixed with water so that it can be applied to the paper. Watercolor pencils look and react like tube or pan watercolors when you wet them. I'm sketching this apple as an example, and then I'll apply a base of red, and I'll overlay some green, and then I'll overlay some yellow. After your sketch is complete, you brush on water to achieve the wash-like effect of conventional tube or hard watercolor. It's a fun way to use watercolors. I really like watercolor pencils. Let's explore some watercolor techniques. Try wetting your surface and then dab some paint on it. Notice how the paint reacts to the wet surface. The wetter the surface, the more the paint will spread. You can achieve many creative effects this way. Here's an example. I'm going to wet the surface of this circle. Notice how the paint bleeds together with the water, creating a very soft and blended effect. I'm going to paint this other circle without adding any water. I'll just add the paint directly to the circle. Notice the hard edge. As you can see, I can go back with water to soften the edge. Here's a neat technique. Apply some low-tack masking tape, paint over the top, then blow dry it until it's dry. Remove the tape and you'll have a clean edge. Here's a real neat technique. Paint the surface first. Now mix some water and paint together on a three inch brush and going in an upward motion, you can see how the bristles from the brush create the grass effect. That's a wonderful technique. All right, now sit back and enjoy as I color in this cartoon in real time with watercolor.
that was really cool learning about watercolors. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's get started on our watercolor painting. Here's the materials you'll need. Tube or pan paint, a plastic paint tray, a medium and white tip brush, nonstick tape, watercolor paper, eight and a half by 11. The colors you'll need for today's project are yellow, red, black, and raw umber. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to tape down my paper. I like to place my tape a half an inch inward onto my paper. I'm using a low tack masking tape, which allows me to remove it without tearing the paper up. When I'm done with my project, I'll remove the tape leaving a nice white border. There, that should do it. Now this is our horizon line, and above it, I'm going to paint the sky first. I'm going to apply tape where I want my horizon line to be. You'll need some paper towel to dry your brushes and a blow dryer to speed up the drying process. I'm going to mix red and yellow for the sky. But the first thing I want to do is wet the surface with water. This will help me uh, blend the colors together. Uh, you don't want too much water, just enough to wet it lightly. By mixing red and yellow, I'll create a nice orange color. I'm going to start from the top and work my way down, going from dark to light. As you get closer to the horizon line, it will always get lighter. Now I'll wipe my brush and add more yellow to the sky. I'll blend it like so until I'm happy with the final effect. That looks nice. Again, I'll blow dry it like so. And when it's dry, I'll remove the tape. Now, I need to apply tape here before I paint the lower portion of my scene, which is the water. The tape will keep paint from bleeding into the sky area. There. After I clean my brush, I'll wet the area below the sky. Again, not too wet. Just enough to dampen it. Very good. And I'm going to mix more yellow and red together. And I'll apply my paint, starting from the bottom and working my way upward towards the horizon line. And I'm going from the bottom upward, going from dark upward to light. Keep working with it. Keep working it, using horizontal strokes to blend it. Good. Now I'll dry it. And now I'll remove the tape. Excellent. Now before I paint the mountains off in the distance, I need to apply tape here so my paint doesn't bleed into the water area. It's a good idea to burnish the edge so that no paint bleeds underneath the tape. I'm going to use my medium number six brush to paint in the mountains. I'm mixing black and raw umber for our mountains. I've mixed a little bit more water to my color so that the paint is more transparent and lighter in color. The more water you mix with it, the lighter that color will be. And the opposite is when you use less water, 
you'll find that the color will be darker. You can see why I taped the area below the mountains. It'll make a nice clean edge when I peel it off. And I'll continue to brush in the uh, area like so. And once I feel it's complete, then I'll dry it with the blow dryer. Now I'm ready to remove the tape, always peeling the tape away like so. And there's a nice clean edge. The next step is to paint the foreground and trees here. I'm mixing black and raw umber with my wider brush. Now starting here, I'll brush in my foreground color. Notice the paint mixture is very dark and intense. Objects closer to you will be darker in color, and objects away from you will appear lighter. I'm using my medium number six brush to create the trees. Notice the paint mixture is very dark and intense. Check it out! Here's a cool technique to paint leaves on a tree. Apply your paint to a wide brush like this one. Dab the paint over the branches. Keep dabbing until you're happy with the way it looks. Now, pat it dry with a paper towel. Wow! Leaves on a tree! I'll start at the top and work my way down. And I'll add more paint to my brush. As I glide my paintbrush downward, notice the line gets thicker as I apply more pressure. It's a taper stroke where you go from thin and as you bear down, your line gets thicker. Because trees, they taper off. They get thinner as they go higher. And I'll darken up the side of the trees. Like so. I can create smaller branches uh, by just using lighter strokes with the uh, tip of my medium brush here. And I'll just keep adding more branches, just like so. Apply more paint to my brush. Notice branches uh, overlap other branches. I'm going to uh, continue to add branches to these trees, like so. I'll just keep doing that until I'm happy with the way it looks. And I think that's enough branches. Good. Here's a neat technique. I'll rinse off my wide brush so I have no paint on it. Because my brush is still damp, it will allow me to remove paint from the foreground area creating very neat highlights. When I'm done creating uh, my highlights, I like to go back with the medium brush with that red-orange color and overlap the highlight areas to show that the sky is reflecting on all the objects in my painting just like the moon would reflect its light on different objects. And you could see it on the edge of the trees and the edge of the rocks. Well, the same goes for this painting. The sky would reflect on all the objects in the painting. Just a little more. Great. That looks very nice. Now I'd like to add some leaves to the branches. I'm going to apply some paint to my wide brush. Now I'm going to use the same color that I used on the trees in the foreground. By using the bristles in a dabbing type motion, I can create 
the effect of leaves. There, just keep dabbing it like so. If you need some help with this technique, go back to the check it out segment. Maybe uh, tilt the brush a little bit to make some odd shaped leaves. I'll just keep dabbing until it looks like uh, there's plenty of leaves on all of the branches. And now I'm going to add a few more branches here and there, just like so. There, I think that looks fine. Okay, now right here in the sky, I'm going to add some birds. My first bird will have the wings going in an upward motion, and the other bird will have the wings going in a downward motion. I think our painting looks great. It's time to remove the tape now. Notice the clean edge border around the painting. Now as you remove the tape, be sure that you pull away from the paper. By pulling the tape away from the painted area, if by chance it does tear, you'll be tearing outside of the painted surface. If you were to pull the tape the other way and it did begin to tear, you would be tearing it within the painted area and we don't want that. Now, there's one last thing I'd like to do and that's to sign my name. That was really fun doing our watercolor painting. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Until next time, you keep practicing, you keep drawing, and be the artist that you can be.